right, this, this came from somewhere else. I mean, as bizarre as that is to believe, but I mean, it's there, I saw it. I know what the current state of the art is and in, in physics, and it's, it can't be done. Hidden within Area 51, scientists have created an awe-inspiring force, a phenomenon that resists containment. This enigma possesses an overwhelming power that defies all attempts at control. It has sent shockwaves through various circles, baffling even the most astute minds. What exactly have they done behind those heavily guarded gates? Could this discovery revolutionize our world, or does it harbor the potential for unimaginable chaos? Join us as we uncover this incredible creation of scientists at Area 51. Before we delve into the intriguing details, let's take a moment to set the scene. What is Area 51? Area 51 is a covert military facility situated in the desolate expanse of the Nevada desert. It has long been a hotbed of conspiracy theories and covert military research. From the mysterious sightings of UFOs to unexplained phenomena, this secretive facility has captivated our curiosity for decades. Area 51, colloquially known as a map location, houses a covert United States Air Force base. It is situated at Groom Lake within the arid Nevada desert, 85 miles north of Las Vegas. This remote facility operates under a veil of profound secrecy. It uses a combination of warning signs, electronic surveillance, and armed security to deter public intrusion. Overhead access via aircraft is strictly prohibited, although modern satellite imagery has lifted the shroud of mystery to reveal the base's layout. The base features runways extending up to a staggering 12,000 feet, equivalent to 2.3 miles or 3.7 kilometers. Adjacent to Area 51 are two other restricted military zones. The first zone is the Nevada Test Site, where the U.S. tested nuclear weapons from the 1950s to 1990. The second zone is Nevada Test and Training Range. This extensive expanse of land spans over 2.9 million acres. The entire range is vital to the U.S. military's tactical testing, development, and advanced training programs. In the summer and fall of 1957, atmospheric nuclear tests occurred above ground at the Nevada Testing and Training Range. These are known as Operation Plumbob. This comprehensive series involved 29 explosions, encompassing troop readiness tests and accidental detonations. It also involves the effects of flying debris on living targets. These details, sourced from declassified documents, shed light on the significant role played by security officer Richard Mingus. Mingus was tasked with guarding multiple weapons testing sites during these explosions including one that housed the largest atmospheric bomb ever detonated in the United States. To grasp the mystery that shrouds Area 51, we must first navigate its rich historical background. The origin of Area 51 can be traced back to the Cold War period. During this time, paranoia and the race for military supremacy between the United States and the Soviet Union reached unprecedented levels. In the early Cold War years, the United States and the Soviet Union were like rivals in a competition. Each wanted to be the best country and the most dominant military power. So, they decided to keep many of their scientific discoveries secret, like how to build better rockets and weapons. But they also kept other things secret like how to grow more food and use energy more efficiently. They believed that knowledge was a kind of power. By keeping these secrets, they hoped to have an advantage over each other and protect their respective country. This secrecy was a big part of the intense rivalry between the two superpowers during the early Cold War. To avoid another world war, both the United States and the Soviet Union invested heavily in surveillance technologies. These tools allowed them to spy on each other and gather information about new developments in planes and weapons. As a result, the information collected and the surveillance technology were closely guarded national secrets. Very few people in the U.S. and the Soviet governments had access to these secrets from the 1940s until the end of the Cold War in 1991. The revolutionary U-2 espionage plane from the United States was at the center of these operations. It was built to fly higher than any other aircraft at the time. Also, it was designed to undertake reconnaissance flights over targets worldwide, gathering comprehensive pictures and measurements. In 1955, the CIA initiated Project Aqueduct, 
It was a mission dedicated to finding a secure and covert locale for testing the highly secretive U-2 reconnaissance aircraft. This quest led to an exhaustive search, culminating in selecting the Groom Lake area within the Nevada test site. Ultimately, Area 51 was chosen as the U-2's testing station. What made this location ideal? It was remote, rarely populated, and featured a dry lake bed. It had a natural runway that perfectly suited the U-2 program's needs. It provided an additional layer of secrecy and protection for the plane's operations. It emerged as a covert hub for the testing and advancement of cutting-edge aircraft. Notably, it became home to the development of iconic aircraft such as the U-2 and the SR-71 Blackbird reconnaissance planes. Over time, Area 51 underwent a profound transformation. It emerged as a nucleus for pioneering aviation technology and intelligence operations. Likewise, it served as the ultimate testing ground for an array of top-secret aircraft, including the A-12 and the illustrious SR-71 Blackbird. In 1962, the A-12 took its inaugural test flight from Homey Airport. It is distinguished by its distinctive bulging disc-like center and is designed to accommodate additional fuel. A 12 unusual shape and reflective titanium surface may have contributed to some eyewitness accounts of spherical or flying saucer-like objects. Commercial airline pilots, unaccustomed to witnessing aircraft operate at the U-2's extreme altitudes, reported numerous sightings. These encounters left them puzzled and intrigued. Naturally, Air Force officials knew that most of these mysterious sightings were related to U-2 tests. However, they were not permitted to share this information with the public. The workforce, including many civilians, were bound by solemn non-disclosure agreements, compelling their silence. In the mid-1950s, commercial airliners typically operated within altitude ranges of 10,000 to 20,000 feet. Even known military aircraft could only reach around 40,000 feet, leading some to believe that human flight couldn't extend beyond that limit. The U-2, soaring at altitudes surpassing 60,000 feet, must have appeared utterly alien and perplexing to those who saw it. These aircraft weren't just technological marvels, they were indispensable assets to the intelligence community at the height of the Cold War. Area 51's role extended beyond the testing ground. It played a pivotal role in several covert operations. Area 51 delivered invaluable intelligence that many argue played a significant part in averting potential military conflicts. While Area 51's covert operations commenced in 1955, its existence remained concealed from the public eye. Flights to the base were conducted using unmarked aircraft. The U.S. government officially denied the base's existence until 2013, when declassified CIA documents finally acknowledged its presence. Consequently, they used terms like natural phenomena or high-altitude weather research to explain off various UFO sightings. The UFO frenzy took off during the summer of 1947. A few months later, the G-2 Intelligence Division, then part of the Army's Intelligence Corps, dedicated significant resources and efforts to locate two former aerospace designers from the Third Reich, Walter and Reimar Horton. Rumor had it that they had crafted a flying disc. American intelligence operatives were then dispatched across Europe to track down the Horton brothers and confirm whether they had constructed such a flying disc. The lingering question is why? Why the relentless search for a flying disc? For over a decade, conspiracy theorists have pored over this declassified file. They argued that it was evident that the flying disc was from outer space. What's most fascinating was the Army's acknowledgement of locating the Horton brothers. A document file reveals the Horton brothers admitted to their dealings with the Russians. At that point, the document abruptly ends. Everything that follows remains shrouded in classified secrecy. A source also confirmed that a genuine flying disc crashed in New Mexico involving the Horton brothers. According to this account, the crash disc was subsequently transported to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, and later, in 1951, it was relocated to Area 51, which ultimately lent the base its name. The source claims to have been one of the engineers tasked with receiving the equipment and the individuals aboard the craft. This makes the revelation even more astonishing. Moreover, recently declassified documents shed light on Area 51's involvement in Project Have Donut. This is a 1970s initiative aimed at secretly studying captured Soviet MiG aircraft. They flew these MiG aircraft over Area 51 and set their fighters against them to develop tactics. Through this, they discovered that you can't outmaneuver the MiG but can outpace it. 
This practice continues to this day, except now, instead of encountering MiG-17S and 21S, they're dealing with MiG-29S and Su-27S. The flights remain ongoing with a mysterious incident in September 2017 when an Air Force Lieutenant Colonel tragically died in a plane crash in Nevada. What made this case more perplexing was the Pentagon's initial reluctance to identify the aircraft. It looked like he was in a foreign jet obtained by the United States. What's particularly intriguing about the more recent 2013 document earlier mentioned is that it officially acknowledges the existence of Area 51. In contrast, the 1998 version had substantial redactions when referring to the U-2 test site's name and location. The nearly unredacted 2013 version provides a wealth of additional information. It mentions Area 51 multiple times, Groom Lake, and even a detailed map. In August 2013, the Central Intelligence Agency, CIA, officially acknowledged its presence. Four months following the CIA's unprecedented disclosure, President Barack Obama became the first sitting U.S. president to publicly utter the enigmatic name, Area 51. This marked a significant moment in the facility's long history of secrecy and intrigue. However, not just aviation achievements have fueled the myths surrounding Area 51. Reports of UFO sightings and mysterious occurrences have made it the epicenter of extraterrestrial conspiracy theories. These theories have only contributed to its mystery, making it a magnet for people fascinated by the unknown. But the latest Area 51 discovery goes beyond even the most intricate conspiracy theories. Scientists have accomplished something that is beyond conventional comprehension within this covert facility. They have unleashed a power so vast that it has baffled even the most brilliant brains in science. The specifics of this discovery remain highly classified, leaving the world to wonder about the nature of this force. What we do know is that it has immense potential, both for great good and great harm. The compelling question is whether it can be harnessed and controlled effectively. Area 51's veil of secrecy has been a breeding ground for numerous conspiracy theories. The most popular among these is the claim that the facility harbors an alien spacecraft with the bodies of the aliens who were inside it when it crashed in Roswell. The U.S. government, however, announced that no aliens were involved and the crash involved a mere weather balloon. But other individuals say they have seen strange flying objects near Area 51 or even claim they were taken by aliens and subjected to experiments before being sent back to Earth. However, the fervor of alien conspiracy theories intensified in 1989 when Bob Robert Lazar stepped into the limelight. He made sensational claims during a Las Vegas local news interview saying that he had worked with alien technology inside Area 51. Who is Bob Lazar? Bob Lazar is a central figure in the mysteries surrounding Area 51. Born on January 26, 1959, in Coral Gables, Florida, Lazar is a self-proclaimed physicist and whistleblower. He is one of the most controversial and captivating figures in ufology. His journey into the world of science and technology began during his early childhood in the suburbs of Los Angeles. He pursued these interests throughout his academic life and obtained degrees in physics and electronics. He claimed to have obtained his degrees from prestigious institutions like the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and the California Institute of Technology. In 1989, he disclosed that he was recruited to work at S4, a facility near the infamous Area 51 in Nevada. Lazar consistently maintains that during his tenure at S4, he was involved in the reverse engineering of extraterrestrial technology. He alleges that the U.S. government possessed nine flying saucers of alien origin, one of which he claims to have personally worked on. Bob Lazar's claims of alien technology being tested in the Nevada desert sparked global fascination. It brought the once secret military base, Area 51, into the spotlight. Lazar, a controversial figure in ufology, sparked global discussion by revealing previously undisclosed footage from Area 51. Bob said that he had not only encountered extraterrestrial beings, but had also participated in reverse engineering alien spacecraft while employed at the base. According to him, these advanced machines were powered by an exotic fuel called Element 115, or Muscovium. Such a fuel source is a super heavy artificial element that wasn't officially recognized until years later. Lazar's early mention of the then unknown element added an intriguing layer of credibility to his account in people's perception. This includes his detailed descriptions of the spacecraft's operation. 
In addition, he reported witnessing medical photographs of aliens and contended that the government used the facility to investigate UFOs. However, despite the allure of his narrative, Lazar's background and claims have faced rigorous scrutiny. His alleged educational credentials, for example, have been met with skepticism. There are no records of his attendance at MIT or Caltech, and his name is notably absent from the graduation archives of these prestigious institutions. Furthermore, Lazar's work history before his claimed tenure at S4 remains somewhat vague and difficult to verify. Nevertheless, it is indisputable that Lazar's narrative has left a profound mark on popular culture and the public perception of Area 51. His story deepened the enigma surrounding the base and ignited the public's imagination. Lazar's interviews on television and radio and later appearances in documentaries have kept his story alive and relevant. While some dismiss Lazar as a hoaxer or a teller of elaborate tales, others regard him as a brave whistleblower who exposed secretive government activities. Many dismiss these claims as fiction. Some who have extensively conversed with former Area 51 engineers and employees found the notion offensive. Plus, they were eager to dispel the myth of extraterrestrial involvement. His claims have not only stirred heated debates, but have also prompted numerous individuals to seek a glimpse of the mysteries surrounding Area 51 for themselves. Whether one believes Lazar's accounts or approaches them with skepticism, there's no denying the significant role he has played in shaping the narrative of Area 51. Surprisingly, people suggest that Area 51's connection to aliens may be a clever trick by intelligence agencies. In 1950, the CIA even set up a special office to deal with UFO sightings over Nevada. They used these ideas about UFOs to help hide what they were doing when they were making the U-2 spy plane. Today, Area 51 remains an active facility with ongoing construction and expansions, as evident from Google Earth images. On many early mornings, keen observers may witness peculiar lights in the sky, but these are not UFOs. Instead, they belong to the semi-secret contract commuter airline operating under the call sign Janet. The airline shuttles workers from Las Vegas's McCarran Airport to the base. It maintains the veil of secrecy that still envelops this enigmatic location. Despite its historical significance, Area 51 has become a ground for numerous conspiracy theories. These conspiracy theories about Area 51 have grown to encompass a wide range of ideas. From experiments in time travel to the development of weather-controlling weapons and mind-control technologies, it primarily centers around the existence of extraterrestrial life and UFOs. The facility's veil of secrecy, combined with reported sightings of unexplained aerial phenomena in its vicinity, fueled these speculations. Some even suggest that the moon landing in 1969 was faked at Area 51. This theory was debunked many times and still found its way to gain traction in the internet and social media age. The conspiracy theories have gained even more prominence in this digital era thanks to online forums, websites, and social media platforms where people with similar beliefs share their experiences, stories, and supposed evidence to support their claims. Area 51 has served as a wellspring of inspiration for countless books, films, and television shows. It is firmly establishing its position as a hub of UFO and alien legends. It has evolved into a beacon for UFO enthusiasts, conspiracy theorists, and the curious. This draws them to its heavily guarded gates in the hopes of catching a glimpse of something beyond our world. Despite the shroud of secrecy, publicly available satellite imagery has only fueled more speculation about the activities occurring within the facility. In 2013, in response to a Freedom of Information Act request, the CIA officially acknowledged the existence of Area 51 while confirming its role as a testing ground for aircraft technology. However, this acknowledgement did little to quell the unending rumors and conjectures surrounding the base's supposed extraterrestrial connections. The secrecy enveloping Area 51 has provided fertile ground for speculation, conjecture, and the weaving of myths. It stands as a testament to humanity's enduring quest for knowledge about our place in the universe. It is a testament to our deep fascination with the unknown and our collective curiosity about life beyond our planet. The mystery of Area 51 has not only contributed to its cultural significance, but it also mirrors our society's intricate relationship with secrecy, authority, and the tantalizing prospect of extraterrestrial existence. In this regard, Area 51 transcends its physical boundaries into the realm of our collective cultural consciousness. 
While no concrete evidence supports these claims, Area 51 transcends its original role as a top-secret military site. It has morphed into a cultural phenomenon reflecting humanity's enduring fascination with the mysterious and unexplained. So what exactly is the truth behind Area 51's mysteries, and can we ever truly uncover it? Thank you for watching another episode of Voyager. While you are still here, click on the video on your screen to see more mind-blowing videos like this one.